Welcome everyone, this is Dom, and we are playing Kerbal Space Program in the Kerbal Realism series. So, uh, today I want to, it's been a lot while again, I always say that, um, but today we are in the 0.23.5.464 patch, but anyways, 0.23.5, that's the uh, Asteroid Redirect Mission Update. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the Kerbal Realism uh, game here. Uh, and we're going to... Basically, it's been a while since I've been able to... Uh, I don't need that one. Um, it's been a while since uh, I've been able to play on this series because of the update. I really wanted to get some more stuff done in between recording. Uh, but I really haven't been able to just because the update and not all the mods were done. Uh, so what we're going to do is jump into the research center and, uh, we're going to go ahead and unlock the parts that are different or new. I've already unlocked, uh, cause I've been testing some stuff out the, uh, cause everything got shifted down one level. So the rock max or whatever the, the main cell engine used to be here. Now it's here. And the skipper engine used to be here. Now it's down here. So yeah. Um, ooh, we actually do have the booster things. I did not know that. Anyways, uh, there was an update to, I think, uh, I think this is Interstellar. Uh, we get a new, get a new, uh, reactor thing, which is pretty cool. And, of course, we're gonna need to unlock this grabbing unit, which we have just enough science for. Uh, and that was from the, uh, what is that? That's from the, the asteroid update. Looks like there's also another piece of... Oh, there's an, the inline refinery. Uh, so whenever you get an update and parts have changed, they give you extra stuff in, in the ones you've already unlocked, and obviously probably some over here as well. So that's that. Uh, what am I been up to? Well, I've been testing extensively uh, on, a, on the stream the other day uh, a new shuttle design that actually works. Um, I actually had to go ahead and con reconfigure... Uh, one of the, oh wow, I really, I had to reconfigure one of the, uh, deadly re-entry settings, mostly because in any way, shape, or form, I could not get back into, ooh, don't want that, why is there, oh, okay, that was for later, um, yeah, for the life of me, I couldn't land, uh, this guy safely back at, uh, the space center, so, What's going on is, let's go ahead and just jump into the shuttle, and I don't think we need this commsat thing. Uh, let's jump into the shuttle. It looks just like the old one, the only difference is uh, there's a docking port on it, on the belly, and there's also a different, and of course it's dark outside, there's a docking port on the belly, let's go get into light, it really doesn't matter. Move this please, and there we are, cool. So yeah, there's a docking port here. I think that works for now. Oops. And uh, there's new landing gear. Uh, that's the only differences. Uh, and I think I also changed these, but we have to go back to the old ones. We're going to need to go back to the old ones. Um, so the landing gear uh, is new. And it's the good ones that don't explode upon contact with the ground. So they're the heavy-duty versions that I really needed to unlock before we did our last shuttle mission. So I have Bill and Jeb just kind of floating around in a polar orbit. Uh, this is testing for our future satellites. Uh, these orbits will be for satellites, uh, communication satellites, and for scanning satellites. So what we'll do is we'll pack them in to the shuttle, bring them up, uh, and uh, open up the cargo bay, and... Uh, release them. I didn't bring anything this time around, so you can tell it's empty cargo bay. But the, that's basically the orbit that our satellites will be going. I also need to start updating all of our communication satellites. So where's Comsat 2.0? It should be some. There it is. Um, all of our communication satellites need an upgrade, mostly because uh, I don't like having the what do they call it? The directional dishes, the ones that are like at 45 degrees in those arcs, if I can see them. Yeah, all the white lines. 
all these white lines. What I'm going to do is, uh, this is just a test flight really, I'm going to be replacing all of these communication satellites with uh, something like this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch over to this guy. And I'm going to do one flight off camera uh, with the new design. This is just a test design. And uh, we'll also do, uh, I don't know, I guess we'll just do one on, on, on camera and it'll be sped up. So this is the new communication satellite design and it has a very important part for this specific purpose. A while ago I unlocked this part, the Communitron, Communitron 32, and that has a 5 million meter distance, which gives it enough uh, distance to be able to talk to anything within this circle without having to have that big weird cone of influence. Uh, it doesn't have enough range, however, to talk to um, the moon once it's out here, so we need a different solution for that. The only reason I want to upgrade all of these ones in the circle here is so that uh, we can uh, don't have to worry about staying within these cones to have a connection back to Kerbin. Before, we would launch a probe out uh, and put it in low Kerbin orbit and have to target uh, multiple satellites as we went around, or we had to activate one of those omnidirectional ones. So this is going to make it so we don't have to worry about targeting, we don't have to worry about any of those kinds of things. And we could also dedicate two of those directional, uh, directional ones like these, uh, one of which will always be pointed at the moon and one of which will always be pointed at Minmus for every single satellite that I have in this orbit here. Uh, so no matter what, this and this will always be in communication. And also fitted to the top of it, I'm going to try to get a long range uh, dish as well that we can point at various th ships or entities that we have out in the cosmos, way out in the middle of nowheres. So uh, we don't have to, we wouldn't have to worry about you know kind of waiting for things to get into range and stuff like that. Now the other thing that I wanted to go over because of the update were these asteroids, and uh, this specific one right here it has it's um, we are going to actually jump to the tracking station here. This is uh, my target of interest. The rest of them are they're more or less eh. They're okay, um, but this guy right here is the only one that I've found so far that is going to impact Kerbin, and I think what I want to do with this series is make it as real as possible. So I don't want an object that is potentially 7 to 10 meters across uh, impacting Kerbin, so we're going to have to find a way to redirect it uh, from smashing into Kerbin. Or we might even choose to uh, either arrow break it or capture it in Kerbin orbit so we can study it later. Not sure, but all of these are on... Actually, we should track this one too. Nope, that one's good. And let's track this one too. And uh, yeah, they're all relatively far away from an impact with Kerbin. Then they leave and uh, are thrown on a random trajectory afterwards. So it's not a big factor, a big concern, but the only thing I'm worried about is the guy right here. So let's stop tracking this one, and let's stop tracking this one, and we'll jump to... Oop, here we are. So I'm worried in about... Oops, let's go back. In about 77 Kerbin days, we are going to have to have something ready to intercept this and we have a I'd have to say 77 I'd have to say a 10 day gap potentially eight days uh, whenever it enters sphere of influence to impact uh, to catch up with it dock with it or just basically blow it out of the sky so that's kind of the plan for that we I am going to be done recording this session for this episode but I'm going to append at the end, the satellite uh, reorientation. Um, I did say that we were going to do something else last episode or anything else, but this is a more important uh, subject for the time being. So thank you guys for watching in advance. 
If I don't do a voiceover, uh, this is the last time you're going to be hearing from me. So thank you guys for watching.